So, uh, today we're going to be talking primarily about Project 3. Um, I, have, uh, I think this is going to take most of the lecture, and assuming anyone has questions, uh, it probably will. So, basically, this, that's, that's today's thing. Uh, before I get on to Project 3, though, uh, quick reminder, if you haven't already done so, and uh, if you have completed uh, the extra credit portion of Project 2, um, sign up to discuss that project with me. Uh, okay, so with that said, uh, Project 3 is basically going to consist of uh, three parts. So first off, uh, we're going to be working for Project 3 with a standard uh, database benchmarking uh, uh, suite called the TPCH benchmark. Um, in order to get that to work with your query processor, you're going to have to do a couple of fairly minor additions. Uh, hopefully that shouldn't take more than a couple of hours. Uh, basically, just some slight parsing changes and a main function that calls functions you already implemented. So hopefully that should be fairly simple, uh, but that's, that's step one. Uh, getting, probably you'll, you'll spend a bit more time uh, trying to get, uh, understand TPCH, uh, getting the TPCH code running than uh, actually working on the, your own query processor. That'll be a good thing. That's relatively straightforward to get that set up. Okay, so the, the core of this assignment is going to be in two parts. Uh, the first thing, you're going to build a very simple uh, relational algebra query optimizer. Uh, I'll go over some strategies for how to do that. And as part of that, you'll also be asked to implement a, uh, you're also being asked to implement uh, one of the two uh, more advanced join algorithms, namely either a hybrid hash uh, join or a sort merge join. Um, and then the optimizer is going to have to figure out when it's appropriate to use those particular join algorithms and implement them properly. Uh, okay, so that's two. Uh, the, the third step is going to be uh, to bring in your uh, index structures. Um, so you're going to have to implement uh, both the index scan and index nested loop operators. Uh, decide on a set of appropriate indexes for this particular workload, or for the, the particular workload that um, there are about a couple, uh, six or so queries that you're going to be asked to evaluate properly. And um, essentially, you're going to have to uh, figure out the, set, the appropriate set of indexes for that workload, and then uh, make sure that your query optimizer is aware of those indexes uh, and can actually use them. Um, any questions from a really high level? Is this, uh, does this make sense? I'll take your silence either as some sort of prank or that you understand. Um, let me know uh, if you don't. Okay, so a uh, little bit of an overview. Uh, TPC is the Transaction Processing Council. Uh, they're, they have a number of roles, but their main one uh, for, our, uh, purposes, for our purposes is that they define uh, a set of database benchmarks. Um, they define a whole slew of different benchmarks uh, for various types of database workloads. And the one we'll be working with is uh, benchmark H, uh, which is also known as the decision support benchmark. So we have a whole bunch of aggregate data about, uh, as you'll see in a moment, uh, about a uh, sort of industrial um, warehouse setting. And all of that information has been collected, and now all of the queries that we're going to be running against that are some form of uh, analysis. We want to know uh, various hypothetical scenarios. We want to pose uh, various hypothetical scenarios and see what would happen, uh, what could happen. And we want to know uh, various, uh, we want to do various analytic, uh, various forms of analysis on all of that data that we've collected. So essentially, uh, if you go to this website, that's also on the, the project description, uh, you can download both the, um, uh, the description of the, the high-level description of the benchmark, uh, as well as a, uh, a data generator that should generate some uh, data that should be fairly easy for your, your system to parse. It's very nearly comma-separated value. Um, and yeah, so the benchmark itself consists of 22, uh, what are, uh, essentially, template queries, uh, queries with sorry, 
sort of little blank spaces in them that you can fill in uh, specific values as well as that data generator. Now the schema uh, looks a little bit messy, but essentially you're, you're uh, talking about a database with a set of suppliers. Uh, each supplier uh, produces a set of parts and then um, the database is essentially meant to represent a vendor uh, who is going to uh, process a set of orders, uh, each consisting of a set of line items, each line item uh, being a specific part that was sold uh, to some customer. And then we have various metadata about where, that, where those customers and suppliers are located. It's a relatively straightforward schema. There's a lot of metadata that will be used in the analysis, but from uh, essentially, the the sort of um, the main structure to this is that uh, you have an end-to-end -end, uh, relationship between parts and suppliers. So different suppliers uh, supply different parts. Um, you have a uh, end-to-one relationship between customers and orders. So each customer uh, places some arbitrary number of orders and each order consists of some arbitrary number of line items. And each line item is some uh, pair, part, and supplier. Uh, great. So the, the, your, your main interaction with TPCH is going to, or one of the two main interactions, is going to be through this uh, database generator called dbgen. Uh, compiling it, I'm not going to go over the detailed instructions here. It's relatively straightforward. You need to modify uh, a specific one of the files. You just need to uh, modify it slightly, build dbgen using uh, make, and then that'll basically give you the, the process. Uh, there's a couple of weird bugs that happen on OSX. I've also included uh, instructions for how to get around those. Uh, Linux, most Linuxes, just about everything else you should be able to build without any sort of problems. Uh, but anyway, once you build that, you should get a uh, little process that you can invoke uh, called dbgen. You call it, uh, you give it a, a number of gigabytes to build, usually between 0 0.1 and, well, it can go as large as you like, and it will create a database that is that big, uh, that contains uh, exactly enough, uh, the, the, the representation in textual form of that database uh, will be that roughly that many gigabytes. Uh, that database will be represented as a set of uh, comma-separated value files uh, ending in the extension .tbl, uh, and it will each of those is going to look kind of like this. So basically, a bunch of uh, vert excuse me vertical pipe separated values, uh, and nearly everything is going to be either a number, a floating point, uh, a string, or uh, the one you're going to have to deal with now is a date. Uh, so dates, yeah. So basically vertical pipe separated fields, integers, uh, floating point numbers, strings, and uh, dates. And the dates are going to be represented in a uh, year, month, day format, separated by dashes. Uh, as a simplification for, the, for our purposes, we're not actually interested in manipulating those dates. So we're going to simply, rec all, the only thing we're really interested in is comparing two dates. Uh, is a particular date before, after, or exactly the date uh, that, that we're asking about. Uh, so we're going to take a slight simplification and simply drop the dashes and turn it into a, uh, a, an eight digit number. Does that make sense? Just concatenate the digits of the, the date as is. Uh, is it sort of clear that, so what happens if I compare, let's say, uh, the date uh, February, February 1st, 1998, and February 2nd, 1998? Can I just do a direct comparison on the, the integers? Yes. Yeah. So February 1998 is going to be the same. February is going to be the same. The only difference is going to be in the date column. So. Uh, basically, any sort of comparison on the days, uh, on, on these date representations is going to work out. So that should make things a little bit simpler, uh, keep you from having to implement a date type. You're, you're perfectly welcome to implement an explicit date type if you like. 
Okay, so for part one, and this should hopefully be the, the easiest part, um, it starts off asking you to create a small database with dbgen that you can play around with. So uh, start off with just 100 megabytes of data. Uh, if you go less than 100 megabytes, the database generator starts acting a little weird. So um, don't go less than 0.1. But create a bunch of files. Uh, the, project, uh, the project folder should now include a number, a number of new test files, uh, sorry, a number of new uh, SQL queries for uh, TPCH queries 1, 3, 5, 6, 10, and 19. Uh, basically, those are the, the queries that are simple enough that we can uh, sort of implement, uh, implement them with minimal changes. Uh, everything else is going to require some functionality that we haven't developed yet. Uh, let's see. And I'll generate the files and then basically modify your main function so that you can just pass in an arbitra arbitrary uh, SQL file in the command line and execute that file. Uh, do we need to go into more depth on how to do that? Would you like me to, uh, or, or was that a yes, this is, uh, I can do that? Okay. Yes, I can do that, or yes, I <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I will, if you, have, if you have concerns about the main function, come and see me. I'll, I'll discuss it further. Um, all right, main thing, parsing date types. Hopefully that, sh that should have been uh, clear drop the minuses, concatenate the numbers. There, you have an integer. Um, okay, now, the interesting part of the project, uh, optimization. So, we talked about, uh, before the break actually, we talked about a number of different strategies for doing query optimization. So, here's a query. Um, does anyone see, uh, let's say that uh, C prime is something along the lines of an attribute of R is equal to an attribute of S. Does anyone see a fairly straightforward optimization uh, for this particular query? Hmm? Push down the selection. So push down the selection. Okay. So take the selection and well, you, do you have to? You'd have to push it through the join in this case. Or through the cross product. But let's say C prime uh, is an equality predicate between an attribute of R and, a, and an attribute of S. Can we do something to this expression? And do we like cross products? Do cross products of R into S? Uh, sorry? Do cross products of R and S instead of S and put the selection predicate? Okay, so we can rewrite it into a cross product of R, R and S. Um, there's actually one other thing. So what, uh, do we like cross products? Equijoin. Equijoin, yes. So we can turn uh, this, cro uh, this cross product into an equijoin. And if we do that, and yeah, actually, now that you mention it, you probably would want to uh, then push this, uh, rewrite this into uh, T cross and then R join S. Um, actually, skip that at the moment. But uh, basically, yeah, so turn that into a equijoin between R and S. Now, you'll note something about this particular rewrite. Um, it's relatively local. So there's operations going on outside of the, the portion of the query that gets rewritten. And in fact, there's uh, sort of sub-expressions uh, that also occur within the, the, the uh, portion of the, the query that gets rewritten. Let me try and illustrate that a little bit better. Uh, so we have some big expression on the outside of the query, and then somewhere in that, that big tree of operators, there's a selection predicate, and that selection predicate uh, has as its immediate descendant a cross product, and that cross product has as two inputs, uh, again, some arbitrary uh, relational algebra tree. Uh, in this case, uh, project R and S cross T. But the point is, we don't actually care what's in any of those subtrees. We don't care 
what's in that tree. We don't care what the children are. All we care about is that there is some selection predicate, and its immediate descendant is this cross product. So really, only, only this one portion of the, the tree needs to be changed. All we need to know is, all we need to change is uh, this, this descent, this edge here. We need to know what these edges are so we can reconnect them, but then we rewrite this entire thing and uh, restructure it into something like this. And that should have gone away. Uh, long story short, this, this, and this are entirely unchanged. The only thing we change is what's inside this little bit of, of scope that we're looking at. Is, is that clear? So, um, in order to help you with that, there is a little piece of code uh, called plan rewrite. You are welcome to use that or not use it as, as you like. Uh, but essentially, it's a piece of code that will take some transformation and apply it to every single node of, uh, of some relational algebra tree. Um, and your job is basically going to find which nodes uh, are eligible for some sort of rewrite and then apply that rewrite. Uh, so as an example, what we just did, we found some node, namely the selection predicate, uh, that had a child that was a join. And then essentially we, we, took the, um, we took that selection predicate and the join and rewrote it into uh, uh, sorry, selection predicate and a cross product, and we rewrote it into a, uh, an equijoin. So uh, essentially, the, there's a couple of different rewrites you're being asked to perform. Um, the main one is that you're being asked to implement a hybrid hash and a sort merge join, and this optimizer should identify situations where it's appropriate to do one of those, namely where, wherever there's a potential for an equijoin, and uh, basically then actually rewrite the, the query plan so that it takes advantage of the hybrid hash or the sort merge join. Um, in order to do that, you'll also have to have some mechanism uh, for pushing down selects and pushing down projects. That's, uh, and each of these can basically be phrased as find all nodes of a certain type and then rewrite the entire query to, uh, uh, sorry, rewrite the, that node and maybe one or more of its immediate descendants uh, in, in some particular way. Any questions on this? How are you going to test this? this How are you going to test this? Aha! I'm glad you asked, because that leads me to uh, the final part of part two, or the final component of part two. Uh, your main function should also accept a flag dash explain. And if I say dash explain and then some query, it should print out uh, the original relational algebra query, as well as uh, the relational algebra query in its optimized form. And so the test will basically be, uh, do you take appropriate advantage of uh, situations where it's possible to do a uh, hybrid hash or a sort of, sort of merge join? Uh, for your reference, every single join in this particular workload can take advantage of, uh, every single join in this workload is an equijoin. So in short, uh, you should be rewriting all of the joins. Is that, does that answer your question? Okay. All right. Uh, any uh, any questions on part two? All right. Glad to hear. It. Moving on to part three. So the the challenge of part three is going to be to incorporate indexing strategies into your workload. This is going to be. Uh, this is going to involve two uh, a couple of different set, uh, steps. So first off, each of these queries is going to benefit from some particular combination of indices. What I'm going to ask, what I'm asking you to do, is to determine what indices 
uh, will benefit those particular workloads. Pick some, some set of indices that will help. Uh, for example, in some cases you might want to do equijoin, so maybe you want to build a hash index on a particular attribute. In some cases you might want to do an index scan. Um, there's a number of different evaluation strategies for each query, and uh, basically pick, uh, pick the set of indices that will help you the most. And again, this, this examine operation is not just for my benefit, not just for the benefit of testing, uh, but this is also a good chance to see what your optimizer is doing and to uh, essentially figure out what indices will benefit, benefit you the most. So here, uh, one additional thing, uh, I will, before I do anything else, I'm going to run this index operation, which is going to, uh, which is your, your signal to build the appropriate indices uh, from the data files that are, are going to be made available. Uh, the data files are going to be made available in pretty much the same way. Uh, they're going to be, um, each of the SQL files is defined with uh, the, the file names of the, uh, the table files that you're going to be reading in. So uh, just use those, build the appropriate indices, and, um, and then the bulk of the project, this part of the project is going to be to implement an index scan, implement an index nested loop join, and then to modify the optimizer uh, to replace joins uh, wherever, uh, wherever necessary. If the indices are present, you should be using index nested loop joins uh, if appropriate. Otherwise, hybrid hash will, will work as well. Uh, if the indices are not present, you should uh, that. So basically, if if you have if the index uh, flag hasn't been used to create a set of indices for the the file, then you should be using hybrid hash. If the indices are present, you should be using index nested. Uh, is that clear? Okay, great. Um, okay, so I really don't have all that much else to say about part three. Um, you will be, so I recognize that some people weren't able to get the uh, parser working uh, for part one. So uh, by tonight there will be posted a working implementation of part one. Uh, sorry, of uh, project one part two. So you can just integrate that parser into your own uh, project fairly easily. OK? All right, so um, there are going to be two extra credit components. And three, actually, if you pay close attention to the project description. But there are two, extra, two primary extra credit components. Uh, the first of these is to implement the sort operation. Um, this sort operation should be done as an external sort. It should make use of the buffer manager and temporary files. Um, now, you, if part of this is going to involve actually incorporating the sort operation into your query optimizer. So, for example, the merge sort, or sorry, the sort merge join uh, is going to. You, excuse me. You can implement that as a sort operator and a merge operator. And uh, there are certain rewrites that you can apply to the sort operator. So uh, does it make sense to sort and then sort again? Come on. Thank you. Uh, so, don't buy, uh, so basically, if you see a sort operator and its immediate descendant is another sort operator, you can get rid of it. Um, the, yeah, so uh, there are some operators that automatically produce sorted output. So, for example, if you're doing an index scan, that, that's already sorted. You can get rid of that sort operator. There's a lot of situations where you can basically just drop uh, the, the sort operator that's, that's sitting there. Um, so, basically, uh, in order to do this, uh, implement the sort operator, modify the SQL parser to, uh, to accept sort, lim uh, sort and limit, and then show it off when you uh, uh, show it off 
uh, at, at, in the same way that we're doing the extra credit for project two. Uh, to give you also a little bit of uh, help with this, there are, I believe, three or four of the TPCH queries actually have uh, sort and limit conditions. Uh, so there, uh, the, the project overview has, uh, sorry, the, the project uh, folder has uh, a couple of, of the TPCH queries. Uh, it has a second version of, of those uh, named underscore limit. Uh, query underscore limit. Um, and that's basically, uh, those queries are, are ones that have uh, sort and limit uh, clauses in them. So those are only there for the extra credit. Okay, uh, this is going a bit faster than expected. Um, the other portion of the extra credit is going to be uh, a bi-weekly uh, face-off between teams. So uh, starting a week from this coming Wednesday, anyone who has submitted will be raced against everyone else who has submitted. Um, I'll be doing this uh, twice with a hard cutoff Wednesday night and Sunday night at exactly midnight. And uh, there, there's a formula given in the project description, but basically uh, the score is roughly, is going to be based on both uh, how fast your implementation is and how little memory your implementation uses. Uh, so between those two, uh, you'll get a score uh, relative to your performance, uh, relative to the other group's performance. And uh, whichever team does the best will be getting, uh, or the top five teams are going to be getting uh, 15 bonus points up to a total uh, bonus of 30 points. So with that, um, that's basically the second extra credit. Uh, also, because I told you guys that there would be four projects and I'm now cutting that out, uh, if you feel the, the desire to do so, there's also an optional project four. Uh, so there's a couple of ideas for this in the project three write-up. Uh, don't feel constrained by those. If, if you'd like to do something else, please do. Um, and all of them basically revolve around one idea, uh, adding some sort of functionality to your query processor. Um, you will be graded basically on three parts. Uh, part one, you're going to have to add some feature and make sure that it works. So if you can, step one, demonstrate that that feature works. More importantly, you're going to have to have some way of, of evaluating that query feature. So you're adding some functionality now that I either lets you do something that you couldn't do before, in which case it probably comes with some sort of cost, or uh, the feature that you're adding um, improves performance in some measurable way. And I, essentially what I'm asking you to do here is to evaluate either what the cost of that added feature is or what kind of performance improvement it brings with it. Uh, and then uh, once you've done that, basically do a small little write-up that uh, describes how you, got, how you evaluated the additional feature and um, what sort of performance benefits you were able to add. So in order to do that, uh, if, if you're interested in this, um, look at the project descriptions, maybe try and come up with your own, uh, figure out basically what kind of project you want to do. Um, Make sure you have a good strategy for actually implementing that project and uh, a good strategy for uh, evaluating how effective your implementation was. And once you have both, once you've settled on both of those and, and sort of have a good picture in your mind of how you're going to, how you're going to approach that problem, uh, come to me, uh, uh, schedule a meeting and have a brief chat and we'll, we'll figure out whether that um, whether your strategy, uh, whether the project description falls within the bounds of a reasonable project, and we'll make sure that you're evaluating it in some reasonable way. Once you've done that, there's no step four. Go. So with that, um, that's basically all I had on the project. Uh, so are there any last questions on, on this? All right, well, um, deadline for the project is officially April 30th. I am uh, 
Unofficially, I am comfortable with you submitting uh, as any time before I have to turn in the grades. Uh, as far as I know, that is April 15th, uh, May 15th. So uh, the test, the, 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 the week, the bi-weekly races, however, will stop uh, at the official deadline. So make sure that if you want to participate in that, submit early. So with that, um, thanks. Good luck. May, may the fastest uh, processor win. <laughs> <laughs>